you know that uh, there was kind of a far right move for a lot of uh, GOP nominations. Most of them failed. Good, right? You know, good. But some didn't. And by some, I mean of the three that I was keeping up with, two out of three lost the nominations, and but one got it. And although the one who got it is the more tame of the three, I'm still not a fan that he got it, obviously. Uh, if you don't know, I'm talking about Doug Mastriano, or however you say his last name. He, uh, he ran for, for Pennsylvania governor, and he secured the GOP nomination. Uh, yeah, now I'm, I don't really like him too much. You're left wing? Yes. I am right handed though. Left wing, right handed. But yeah, he won the the GOP nomination. And as you can see here, yeah, uh I don't really align with his values, and there's a reason why I don't like him. He's been pushing the the big steel, you know, narrative more than the average candidate for the Republicans, and uh, yeah, he's also a big promoter of Christian nationalism. Uh, in his own speech at the the QAnon conference, yeah, he attended that. And he was a speaker. He ended his speech with. I will win, and my God will make it so. And he got the nomination. Hasn't won yet, but he's got the nomination. So, yeah, not great. So, he won. But on the bright side, two others lost. Uh, Janice McGeechan from Idaho, who was the furthest to the, to the right. That is right. That is right. The furthest to the right. And highest up on the crazy board, she also lost. Good. <laughs> At the end of the day, good. But, ooh. Also, Teddy Daniels lost his nomination for Maryland. Uh, he's also got his own shit where he uh, has been accused of domestic abuse and uh, is currently in court for that. So, not much is being said about him. At least not as much as Mastriano and McGeechan. But although two out of three of the furthest right crazies in the nomination lost, uh, I still find it very troubling that three were able to run and put up at least noticeable campaigns. McGeechan and Mastriano were able to put very successful campaigns. Uh, Daniels not so much, but he was still able to be noticed enough by the media to at least have some kind of impact within his party. But uh, McGeechan, for sure, being the furthest right, still had a more more uh, support than anything. And speaking to a region, yeah, Idaho has often been uh, a hotbed for right-wing nationalism, especially the kind that she is branded. And Mastriano, although not directly appealing to the right wing, he's appealing more to just classic Trumpism. Yeah, I see Mastriano's strategy being a lot more effective, broadly speaking, especially within the short term. Uh, he's mainly running on Christian politics and Trumpism, and within my state, that has gotten a lot of people far, and may even get one of my own set. The senator from my region may be ousted for not being directly that for the guy who is more directly Trump-supporting and Christian-loving, you know? So that's fun. So I see Trumpism being more of the more mainstream Republican acceptance. But although Mastriano won, I want to focus more on McEachin, mainly because uh, she ran off a campaign uh, partnering and palling around with actual neo-Nazis. And I'm not saying that phrase just to, you know, discount them or put a catch-all turn on, on them. I'm saying that phrase mainly because uh, they openly identified as neo-Nazis. Uh, of course, there was, uh, you know, Stu Peters, uh, Laura Witzke, 
uh, who went to her speaking events and her rallies and were, you know, actual speakers for those rallies. So, yeah, they she ran on a campaign directly appealing to the far right and got pretty far, you know, not going to lie. She she made it a significant distance running with that. And that's worrying, especially given her region, because that shows that there is water within all of this, that this can work and maybe give it enough time, it will work. And yeah, obviously I'm not a big fan of that because, hey, the far right, you know, is going to cause a lot of issues within this country. Especially a lot of the stuff they're running off of. You know, uh, for one, very anti-vax. Uh, Stu Peters was there giving speeches about that and directly calling Democrats and anyone who votes Democrats uh, possessed by the devil. And give it to Christian nationalism that a lot of these people do who will literally do anything for their religion and for their God, except for care for one another like their God says they should. But, you know, they'll they'll gladly kill anyone else. Uh, yeah. That's also very worrying. So, yeah. And actually, HuffPost uh, put out an article specifically about what I'm talking about with uh, McEachin. So let's take a look at that right now. Oh, cool. There's just going to be an ad right there at the very top. Thank you, Photo Project. Oh, you can go. Thank you. Living with the far right insurgency in Idaho. A radical GOP faction in alliance with extremists is seizing power and targeting its opportunities with cruelty. So I wonder, is it time to leave? I'm just going to say, although living in a rural state, especially, you know, as coming from someone who lives in one, maybe moving out's not the best idea yet, especially the low populated states, because uh, hopefully you can attract people to come in and move and or convince a few people to start voting not extremist or against the extremists you know then it's a it's a lot easier in a low populated state than a very densely populated state you know 50 percent of three thousand people is a lot less than 50 percent of three million people you know what i mean so yeah We're, we've been trying very hard within my state mississippi to do that for years at this point and we're getting traction we are if our if our government didn't undermine us at every waypoint they could. Yeah. White nationalist Vincent James Fox had a new video. His nearly 70,000 subscribers on BitChute. 70,000. I only got 95. Well, I don't even have any subscribers. I have 95 followers. Crazy, right? One of the few tech platforms that hasn't banned them. On February 16th, he appeared wearing a baseball hat emblazoned with the state's outline title on its side that resembled a pistol. We are going to take over this state. We have a great large group of people, and that group is growing. A true, actual right-wing takeover is happening right now in the state of Idaho, and there's nothing that these people can do about it. So if you're a legislator here, get in line or get out of the way. The way. Yeah, that just goes to speak volumes about uh, these people. Now... Fox, you know, Mr. Vincent James, streamer, he isn't uh, from Idaho. He moved there, uh, like many of the other far-right extremists, to be able to have some kind of a haven within their state. And they do this very purposefully. They target the Pacific Northwest mainly because it's one of the widest regions within the U.S. and is very rural as compared to, say, the Northeast, which is got it's not as quite predominantly white but it's also smaller and bigger urban centers are there so there's a lot there's a lot less uh, sneaking around they, they can do but 
for the most part, the far right, uh, specifically Klan's members and neo-Nazis, for years and years and decades even, have been moving to the, the Northwest in a way to not only... For the main fact, they wanted to build, like, communes there back in their, you know, crazy days of the 80s and 90s. They wanted to build communes and do things like that, and you can see it very clearly if you just Google up some of the uh, examples. So they wanted to build communes there, create uh, havens where they'd be less monitored because it was you know, far less developed compared to the rest of the country, a lot less people there, and all of that, more white, just in case before if shit went down, they could... They had their own little state. However, the strategy has shifted. And uh, what has happened with that is that many far-right people who are moving to the states now know that there's a lot of sympathies for them because of those pre previous people that have been there. But now they realize these states don't have that much population. So they're able to, if they move there en masse, they can shift the balance within that state. And if you can shift the balance within that state, ultimately you can shift the balance within that country through uh, Congress members, governors, and senators. So they're trying to create a safe state within, uh, let's say, just Idaho for right now. Within Idaho. Not only that, to as a state to reflect their views, but as a state to give them a little bit of safekeeping, and as a state to where they can get their more fringe ideas out into the mainstream. Because, hey, that's probably the easiest way to get a neo-Nazi senator. You know, and if that works, oh boy. So that's more or less become their strategy now. Uh, no one's explicitly said it, but if you catch in on some of their live streams, like I do, uh, you can you you can see them uh, encouraging people to move, to leave whatever state they're in now, especially if it is blue, and move into somewhere like that, because again, they can fudge the numbers a little bit, you know ultimately shift the balance and that's worrying because hey that gives a lot of credence to their ideas and that can shift the balance a little bit more than it already has been shifted you know it's no secret that the republican party has been appealing more and more to its fringe minority in recent years uh, we can see that with the candidates that just run and although it hasn't appealed to the average Republican as much as they want. It's still somewhat appealing at the end of the day. And they're shooting for that. So be sure to keep an eye on this and shut it down. And I will say this to anyone who lives within a rural, undeveloped area. Whether you're in the Deep South, Pacific Northwest, Midwest, wherever you are. If you have a good life where you are at and you're not in danger, stay and try to help your community out because although war terminology is cringy, we don't want to surrender. We don't want to retreat. We want to at least give these people a good fight at the end of the day. And if that means me having to personally bus a million people to live in Wyoming just so we can vote, you know, get the state to not be, you know, a fucking neo-Nazi haven, I will do that. I will do that. But if you live within, say, Wyoming and you vote blue and you, you know, you're pro-good things, anti-bad things. Please stay and try to convince people to see your way. Vote in, uh, you know, vote in people you think that would make an actual positive change within your community. If they're going for infrastructure or a you know, safety net, go ahead, vote for them, right? Even if they don't win, maybe you can convince some people, you know, do some, some people in and out. Because although it will, you know, it's... For me, with, within here, although I may have better job opportunities within other states, I'm still willing to stay here, you know, make a life within this state if it means any significant change for those who also live here, and a change in a good way, 
as in we get better infrastructure for roads, electricity, uh, schools, anything like that. I don't want, even though I don't really like living here as much as I possibly could like living somewhere else, I want the people here who can't exactly move out to at least have a fighting chance, you know? Mississippi ain't great, but it could be better, and I want to see it be better, and I want to be one of the ones to make it better. So, again, if if you don't live in a state where you're not in danger, consider staying and changing it for the better. Because, who knows, it could be easier in the long run. And that's really all I gotta say, right? You know, unless you live in a neo-Nazi state and you are black and gay, maybe you should consider leaving, like, immediately, right? (laughs) Yeah, maybe so. Other than that, white dude in Wyoming, hold down the fort for us, please. Doing God's work out there.